Did you check if you turned off the iron before going to work? Check the truthless of the news before reposting. We will help you with that. Welcome to Stop Fake. Watch this. In an article by Al Jazeera dedicated to Hungary's reluctance to see Ukraine in the EU, the author quoted the words of the newly elected Prime Minister of Slovakia, Robert Fico. He says that Ukraine is one of the most corrupt countries in the world. Fico used this as a justification for a possible cessation of military support to Ukraine from his country. One of the main narratives of Russian propaganda today is the rampant corruption in Ukraine. Corruption has always existed, and corruption was very convenient for the West, because it is very easy to launder money due to corruption in Ukraine. Western politicians always wanted to control such a state as Ukraine, for which you drive a large amount of funds, supposedly for democracy, and in return you get cash. People express their subjective opinions on this topic ranging from those considered traitors to Ukraine who fled after the war began to loyal secretaries of the head of the Russian Federation who initiated the war. They understand that part of the money they give to Ukraine is, simply put, stolen. These confessions are heard in Congress during debates, in committees and, of course, they need to somehow explain to their voters why there is no proper mechanism for spending funds, why they turn a blind eye to this, why they raise the question of allocating new amounts. Let's recall that Fitzo himself resigned in 2018 amid the murder of journalist Jan Kuciak, who was investigating connections between Fitzo's smear party and the Italian mafia. According to Reuters, later on, around 40 high-ranking officials, police officers, judges, prosecutors, politicians and businessmen linked to Smer were convicted of corruption and other crimes. This was reported by Spanish newspaper El País. What about the corruption in Ukraine? Indeed. The presence of corruption in Ukraine is acknowledged by both the Ukrainian government and its European partners. They recognize it and uh, are striving to eradicate it. The results of these efforts are evaluated by European officials. And you have determined your reform agenda and you have already made important progress. Take the fight against corruption. Preventing and combating corruption has been particularly high on your agenda since the revolution of dignity. You have created an impressive anti-corruption machine. Watch this. And now a bit of statistics. After the publication of the Wall Street Journal article titled It's time to ditch magical thinking about defeating Russia, many publications dissected it for quotes. One of the most popular points highlighted was that public support for Putin's policies remains strong, as does the baking of Russian elites. These widely circulated conclusions were made by the authors of the article, former intelligence officer Eugene Rumer and the security ex-specialist Andrew Weiss. What I missed, I lied about. It can be said about the aforementioned authors, who picked at the numbers of the website of all Russian Center for the Study of Public Opinion and decided to invent a whole theory around them. Should it be noted that the Center's data is entirely controlled by the Kremlin? All these fake news about elite support for Putin are actively spreading because there are plans for an event in March 2024 in Russia, namely the presidential elections. Therefore, it's crucial to maintain the illusion of Putin's eternity and the success of his actions. The American Institute for the Study of War emphasized back in December 2022 that Putin was concerned about the lack of elite support for the war in Ukraine, so he would take measures. Indeed, similar sentiments were observed among the general population in Russia. An independent research group, Russian Field, conducted its 13th survey in late October on the attitudes of Russian residents toward the war in Ukraine. It noted that the level of support for initiating peace talks exceeded, for the first time, the number of those who wanted the war to continue 48% versus 39%. 
Additionally, the number of people who considered the actions of the Russian army in Ukraine successful decreased for the first time, albeit only by 2%. Watch this. Do you want some more absurdity? Then let's go back into spring 2022. The French publication Le Dialogue released an article claiming that French President Emmanuel Macron likely knew about Washington's plan to prevent negotiations between Ukraine and Russia, which allegedly were set to take place in the spring of 2022. A similar prohibition reportedly came from former UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson. It is not surprising why such texts emerge in the Western press. One of the favorite narratives of Russian propaganda is to quote, Russia's readiness for peace in the spring of 2022, disrupted by the West's interest in continuing the war. This viewpoint is regularly voiced in central propaganda shows. Despite the fact that the Ukrainian people supposedly chose Zelensky, the most important decision in the history of this nation, that all Ukrainian men and now Ukrainian women should be killed, was made by the British leader Boris Johnson, for whom not a single Ukrainian voted. Now this worthless Johnson writes articles, and Ukrainians continue to die. Indeed, propagandists and their bosses sometimes get confused themselves about who actually forbade Zelensky from making peace with the occupiers. According to one version, it was Johnson while, according to another, it was the U.S. Secretary of State Blinken and Defense Minister Lloyd Austin. It looks like they started dancing, three rounds of negotiations took place in Belarus, then in Istanbul, then Blinken and Austin gave Zelensky a command and he forbade negotiations. Facts are on the table. Participants of those meetings reviewed the idea that the Ukrainian delegation could or had signed a peace agreement with Russia during the negotiations in 2022. Specifically, Deputy David Arachamia confirmed that Boris Johnson did express that Russians couldn't be trusted and there was a need to continue fighting. Neither I could sign, nor any member of the delegation has any legal right to sign anything, right? This could only theoretically happen if there was a meeting between Putin and Zelensky. Then it would have to be ratified in the Parliament. When people say that, they are targeting an uneducated reader, or viewer, or listener. Russian myths about the possibility of ending the war in April 2022 are created with the aim of showcasing Russia's willingness for diplomatic solutions and peace on the one hand, while on the other, emphasizing Ukraine's dependence on the US and the UK. However, it's worth noting that the decision to hold negotiations was made by the Ukrainian side on the days when the atrocities committed by Russians in Bucha and Irpin became known. Watch this. And now I'm suggest taking a break and visiting a jewelry museum. The English language publication TeleReport published an article titled Kiev's museum have nothing to do with Scythian gold. In the text, the authors reference political scientist Ivan Mizuho, who considers the return of Scythian gold from the Netherlands to Ukraine as theft. The publication emphasizes that the court decision in the Netherlands was absolutely unlawful in the spirit of neo-colonial policy, handing over the gold to those who do not rightfully own it. Any manipulation involving the Scythian gold is the work of Russian propaganda. They don't oppose its return to Ukraine, but they prefer to see it in Crimea. Why? Because it's under the control of the occupiers. The transfer by the Netherlands of exhibits from the exhibition Crimea, Gold and Secrets of the Black Sea, belonging to four Crimean museums, to the Kiev authorities, is illegitimate from the point of view of the established practice of museum exchanges and absolutely unconscionable from the point of view of universal morality. In 2014, four museums in Crimea lent a collection of ancient treasures to the Netherlands for display. The plan was for the collection to return in 2015, but due to the occupation of Crimea, this, of course, didn't happen. The occupying administration decided to challenge this in court. Interestingly, all three courts that heard the case since 2016 ruled in favor of Ukraine. 
The latest decision was from the Court of Appeal in Amsterdam to return this so-called Scythian gold to Ukraine. This concern over 565 items from the museum funds of Ukraine, mainly archaeological finds. The collection is valued at around 10 million euros. The Amsterdam Court of Appeal has ruled that the Allard Pearson Museum, APM, has to hand over the Crimean treasures to the Ukrainian state. Its obligation to return the museum pieces to the Crimean museums has ended. Watch this. On this lightning topic, we conclude this episode. Be cautious and share only verified news. This was Stop Fake. See you next time. Mm -hmm.